Well, seniors, it's about that time. We're graduating. 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 Graduating high school. The only four years in our lives that we go to high school is gone. It's hard to believe, right? It seems like only four years ago we were freshmen. Oh, wait. Moral of the story, we've all learned something from high school. Maybe not academically, but let's face it. We all know how to procrastinate, sleep through school, get some alcohol, sell drugs. I know, stop, I'm such an inspiration. But in reality, we've all learned something, guys. And I've learned a lot through high school, too. And I'm going to share my story with you. Now, for those of you that know me, you guys know that I moved to Florida during my 8th grade year. The reason I moved down there is because my mom got a new job in Orlando. So I was pretty much drugged down there. But to be honest, I was pretty excited to go. I mean, it's Florida, come on. So anyway, the move down there was a whole new experience. A new environment, a new group of people, and a totally different vibe. Living in Florida is like nothing else. The weather's awesome year-round, and there's palm trees everywhere, dude. So one of the downsides of moving down there during my 8th grade year, I had to go to a new middle school. And you know what that means. I was the new kid. Nobody likes being the new kid. And I wasn't just some new kid that moved in from another city. I mean, I moved in from Kentucky. Nobody knows a Kentuckian in Florida. So that put a lot of pressure on me, because I didn't know what people were like in Florida. Like, what do they do down there? I don't know. So I remember my first day at my new school, and I didn't know what the heck was going on, and, and I didn't know anyone. I was freaking panicking. When I start to panic like that, I got so quiet. I didn't know what else to do or what else to say. I would just kind of sit and listen and watch. And I knew from right there this was going to be a test of my social skills. I knew that I had to push myself to talk to people, and I knew I needed to make myself comfortable in my unfamiliar surroundings. And so, I did. I only stayed at this school for another half a semester or so. And in the end, I found a great group of friends, I even got a girlfriend, and everything turned out alright. But most importantly, I felt comfortable again. I was talking to people normally, I wasn't near as quiet, and I was way more outgoing. But like they say, all good things come to an end. And this is when I learned that my parents said that we're going to be moving again. We found a house in Winter Garden, Florida. It was closer to Orlando, so it was easier for my mom to get to work. The only downside, I had to go to a completely new middle school. And keep in mind, this is my third middle school in my eighth grade year. So leaving my second middle school to go to my third one, luckily for me, wasn't that hard. And I felt like I was ready to go to my third new middle school. Since I'd gotten comfortable with meeting new people at my second one, I was like, well, this shouldn't be that hard, you know? Well did not really turn out that way. A few things you should know about the Orlando area, it's not really what you would think. Now don't get me wrong, there are some nice places around Orlando. On the other hand, there's also some not so very nice places in Orlando. And if you get what I'm saying, I'm talking about the ghetto. Now we definitely didn't move to the ghetto, but we were right on the border. We lived on the nice side of town, and just on the other side was the ghetto, and the rednecks, and all the black people, and all the Mexicans. Call me racist if you want, but it was the truth. So remember how I said I thought I felt pretty uncomfortable leaving my second middle school? Well, my first day at my third middle school was a disaster. I didn't even know what kind of environment I was in. These people were so different. I didn't know how to fit in. On my first day, I was completely quiet. Didn't even say a word. And that was bad for me because I wasn't really meeting new people. So this time, I knew I had to step up and start talking to people. I needed to be more outgoing. I can't just sit around and be quiet all the time, that's not going to make me any friends. It might have been a slower process, but eventually I finally caught on. My school took some getting used to, trust me. And I'm going to be honest, I wasn't really used to being around a lot of black people. And living next to the ghetto, I'm pretty sure you could probably imagine how they acted. Now I'm sorry if I've offended you in any way, shape, or form, but that's just part of my experience. Once again, I was stuck in unfamiliar surroundings, and I had to adjust on my own. But I pulled it off. My social skills were building up, and it made my life so much easier, especially when it came to high school. Akoe High School, home of the Knights. Freshman year, guys, this is what I look like. Go ahead and get a laugh. Aha. Uh -huh. I guess I can just start out by saying this. For those of you who think that Madison Central is a ratchet high school, <laughs> You might want to go check out Akoi High School. Akoi High School is like the definition of ghetto. When you see girls that wear like 
46 different colors in one outfit. Come on, you know you're out of place. But that was my school. Now honestly, my first couple years at this school were kind of rough. My freshman year sucked. It was a terrible start to high school. Somehow I got stuck in this AP class that I didn't even sign up for. I had bad grades year round. That's something I've never experienced before. On top of that, I found my group of friends, but it wasn't really fitting in. I was staying too quiet. I wouldn't talk, I just listened. And if you're kind of just sitting there listening and not talking, then what are you doing? Oh, and get this. My school had a two mile radius around it, and if you lived in that two mile radius, you had to walk or ride your bike to school every day. And I was lucky enough to live within that two mile radius. Outside of school, I didn't even crap. I'd go home, maybe do a little bit of homework, if anything at all. And I'd sit on my ass and I'd play Xbox. It was my only source of entertainment. I had nobody in the neighborhood to go hang out with. Looking back now, I can see how much staying at my house, playing Xbox, held me back. During all that time that I was playing Xbox, I could have been out making more friends. But anyways, basically freshman year, I faced a lot of challenges. Sadly enough, I didn't do anything about it. I just went through freshman year before it to be over. And I can literally say that the best part of my freshman year was winning some stupid kickball tournament with my homeroom class. How sad is that? Now I'm usually a cup half full kind of guy. So my sophomore year, I was ready to go. I wanted to give it another shot and see what would happen this year. Looking back at my sophomore year, I guess it wasn't all that bad. The only thing that sucked is I got stuck with some poopy teachers. Started Spanish my sophomore year with a crappy Spanish teacher, hated my geometry class, and I had the devil for an English teacher. The only class that I actually enjoyed was my world history class. Now, history sucks. I hate history. The only reason I really like this class is because of this one girl. Don't jump to conclusions just yet. This one girl was actually part of the group of friends that I hung out with. But, <laughs> she was amazing. It was like I couldn't even find anything that I did like about her. Say the least, I had feelings for her, I'm not gonna lie. And I know, she was my friend and all, but I couldn't help it. Now being the ladies man that I am, I wanted to do something about it. And this slowly and dreadfully turned into something that made my sophomore year not so great. Now this girl, she was extremely friendly. Sometimes it was hard for me to understand if she was being friendly or if she was actually kind of being flirty. That's just how she was. But being me, all I could think about was it being flirty. And that just made me want her even more. But a lot of the time, I was really on the fence about this. During my early years of high school, I was pretty insecure of myself. My acne was terrible, my hair was a mess, and I just felt like I wasn't attractive. So with my insecurity, I didn't know how to approach this girl. I didn't know how to tell her how I felt about her. So what did I do? I decided to send her a text one day and tell her how I really felt. Couldn't even have the balls to tell her in person. And it did not go well. I wanted something more, and she didn't. And to make things worse, I got mad at her for it. We went from talking every day in world history to not talking at all. It was completely awkward and it made me feel like crap. I'd say for about two weeks, I just wasn't myself. I wasn't talking, I wasn't being interactive. I guess you could just say I was depressed. At school, I didn't let it show. I didn't want anybody to know. My problem, I just thought too much. I was literally thinking myself to the point that I was so stressed that I couldn't handle it anymore. And finally, out of nowhere, I realized, just stop. You gotta move on, you can't sit here and pout like this. You need to man up, you need to fix what you did, you need to move on. She doesn't want you, you can't have her. And that's what I told myself. I basically said, look, face it, you're gonna be single for a while. And you know what? The longer you wait, the better off you're gonna be. Instead of searching for a girl, you might as well let the right girl come to you. Now that's the Tyler that I knew. So I finished out my sophomore year strong. Not only did I get my grades up, me and this girl eventually started talking again. I got my license before summer came. No big deal. And after another great summer, junior year was already here. Hold on. Junior year is here already? I'm gonna be a senior after this year. But I was ready. I was so looking forward to junior year. It was gonna be fun. Now I had my license, but I didn't have my car just yet. It turned out I only had to ride my bike to school for the first two weeks. 
And then I finally got my first car, and it was an amazing feeling. Knowing that I could drive to school the next day was awesome. There was no better way to start off my junior year of high school. Little did I know that getting a car would finally turn things around for me. I could go hang out with friends, I could go to the gym, I could do all sorts of stuff. And that's pretty much what I did after every day of school. On my birthday, I finally bought my own stereo system. I was bumping. So my junior year was already off to a great start. And for the most part, it stayed that way. Sure, I had a few classes that I didn't really like, but I mean, it's high school. Other than that, my mindset was still set forward. Yeah, I still had girls on my mind, but it started to become less important to me. And I was also able to build up my self-confidence a lot. And I wouldn't have been able to do it without all of the friends that I've made. I knew I was doing good because I was able to talk to everyone. My close group of friends and I bonded that year. We were always hanging out and we were having tons of fun. And that's all that mattered. I knew that my senior year was going to be a blast. But clearly, my senior year was not going to be spent in Florida. So I came home one day and mom was in the kitchen. She wanted to talk. No big deal. But then she asked a big question. She asked me, how would you feel about moving back home? And then it set in. My heart literally was split. I had worked so hard for what I had gotten in Florida, for what I had achieved, for the friendships that I had made. Now I didn't have much of a decision. It was hard for a while. I really liked Florida, especially after my junior year. So I ended up telling my group of friends, and that was a sad day. It sucks that I had to leave them. But the one thing that I knew was I was coming home to the friends that I grew up with. And because of that, I knew I was going to have a great senior year. And having everything that I've learned and taught myself on my own up until now, I knew that adjusting to a new school one last time was going to be no problem at all. And to say the least, you know what? How about you just check it out for yourself? You want to see how animals eat their food? Watch closely. My senior year was probably the most eventful school year that I've ever had. Our first game on the new football field, making it on homecoming court, 
making a metal replica of our school mascot and welding class. Something with my name on it that's going to stay with the school for years to come. And most importantly, following the boys on their road to taking home the state championship title. My senior year has been the best school year I've ever had. I couldn't have asked for a better school or a better group of people to end my last year of high school with. I've came such a long way, and in the end, I came out on top. So what did I learn in high school? Simple. Make the best out of it. If you make the best out of high school, you're going to learn a lot of things. You're going to be forced to make friends, you're going to be forced to have fun, and you're going to be forced to be yourself. Those three things right there has made me the person that I am today. You can't let stupid stuff like schoolwork or girls or drama hold you back. And luckily for me, I figured that out earlier. And that's why the past two years of high school has been amazing. So that's my story. But I've got one question for you. What did you learn in high school? Sean, shut up. We all know that you didn't learn anything, whatever. It might not be something that you learned, but it could be something that changed you. And then once you learn how to use that to help yourself, you're golden, baby. The story of my high school experience may be over, but I've got my whole life ahead of me. In my future, my biggest goal is just to be successful. There's always been a small part inside of me that wants to be known. Maybe not famous, but I want to be known for something important. Basically, I just want people to remember me by something. Most of you guys know that after high school, I plan on going in the military. Whatever I do, I want to be an aircraft engineer. The thought of being around jets or helicopters and knowing how they work and fixing them and stuff just makes me feel like a little kid. I guess one of my biggest dreams would be to work for NASA. Who knows by the time I'm done with military and by the time I'm done with college, NASA might be doing some big new project. And if I've got the right qualifications, I'm going to be all over it. And lastly, I've always loved music. Honestly, I think that there's a part of me inside that loves music more than I even know. And maybe I just haven't even discovered it yet. But back in the day, I used to have some vocals. I've still got some now, but I'm not about to show you, so don't get your hopes up. And I really enjoy guitar. Maybe one day I can do some composing of my own and see where that goes. If there was one thing that I could leave for you guys, it would be to live your life to the fullest. You gotta stay positive no matter what. There's always gonna be obstacles in life, and it's up to you whether or not to overcome them. And take that advice with someone with some experience.